Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Liz. Today we are talking about my favorite books about queer girls. So I made a video about a week or so back about my favorite FF romances. These books are about sapphic women, but the focus isn't on romance or maybe they're bisexual and end up with men or the story just isn't really about their identity at all but I still wanted to share those books with you because I think some of these are real gems that everyone should read. We're going to start this list off with some contemporaries uh, and the first one I'm going to talk about is Ask the Passengers by A.S. King. This is probably the first book I ever read that had a lesbian protagonist. It is about this teenage girl named Astrid who has recently moved from like a big city to a small town with her family and it's just about her kind of going about her life, working shit out with her girlfriend, going to gay clubs, you know how it is. It has been a few good years since I read this book but I do remember the thing that I enjoyed the most about it was just Astrid's narrative voice. She's very sarcastic and droll and I just enjoyed that a lot. There's also like a magical realism aspect to this book where Astrid will sort of just lay down and look up at planes flying overhead and imagine the people inside and like send out her feelings to them and then we also get little chapters of the people in these planes it's a good time. Next is a book that I finished very recently, like a few days ago, and it is fantastic. And that is Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. This book is really good. It is about this 19 year old Puerto Rican girl named Juliet who is going away for the summer to intern for this really prominent feminist writer named Harlow Brisbane which by the way tripped me out the whole time because Brisbane is an Australian city that I live like an hour away from so uh. and it's sort of about her discovering the politics of feminism and queer spaces and shit like that. You know, she's this Puerto Rican girl and this writer that she's interning for is this white woman and there's a lot of conversation about like feminism, the intersectionality of feminism, how white feminism tends to dominate a lot of these spheres and talking points and how that's a bad thing. It's about her kind of coming into her identity as this fat gay woman of colour and it's really good. My favourite parts of the book are Juliet like researching all of these women from history for Harlow's book and she comes across this woman named Lolita Lebron who was this Puerto Rican political activist and it's just really good. I will say it did get a little hippy dippy at times for me, not just with Harlow the hippie lady but there's a lot of like passages about like embracing and discovering your womanhood and connecting with your spirit and all this and I'm like you know different strokes for different folks <laughs> but definitely would recommend it. Juliet's narrative voice is just so fresh and fun to read from. Next we're gonna take a little dip in the mood and talk about Under the Udala Trees by Chinelo Ocpranta. This is a book about this girl named Ijeoma growing up during the Nigerian Civil War and just following her life uh, as she kind of discovers that she's a lesbian. So many trigger warnings for this book. So many, holy shit. But I really enjoyed this because I feel like a lot of the time with queer fiction it's so western focused and a lot of the struggles of the people and the characters are western focused. The author said that she wrote this because in 2014 basically homosexuality was made illegal in Nigeria and this book is sort of acting as like a snapshot of one queer person's life living in Nigeria. I would also recommend listening to this book on audio. That's how I read it. I would recommend this with any book where the characters speak multiple languages or it's just set in like a non-Western country because the characters do switch back and forth between languages. There is like sections where characters are singing and 
I think it just heightens the atmosphere. Another thing I really liked about this is that it explores religion a lot. Like, Ijeoma and her community are very heavily Christian, and that plays a huge role in her life. And I think when you're dealing with queerness and religion running side by side in a story, a lot of the times it just is very black and white, whereas the way that Ijeoma and the author kind of talk about different ways of interpreting the Bible and certain stories within the Bible, I just thought spoke to me a lot. I went to Catholic school like my whole life, so I've studied Christianity and other religions quite a bit. So I enjoy those conversations, especially when they're actually thoughtful and coming from the perspective of a queer person who was raised with religion. And it's just really good. Next, let's talk about Noteworthy by Riley Redgate. This is like one of my favorite books, and I feel like no one talks about it. And it's a crime. <laughs> this is about a bisexual girl named Jordan, who is like this scholarship student at this very prestigious performing arts college. And pretty much she never gets any roles in like the singing activities at her school because her voice is so deep. And so her parents are basically like, yo, we're not sending you to this super expensive school for nothing. You got to start doing some shit. And so she decides that when she sees auditions opening for the all boys a cappella group on campus, that she is going to cross dress and audition and she gets in. And it's a great fun romp. I feel like a lot of the time when you have cross-dressing tropes in stories, uh, queer people are kind of ignored, especially trans people. This book doesn't do that. While the main character isn't trans, she does explore gender and gender expression a lot in this book, and it's really good. This does involve an MF romance with this other boy in the a cappella group. It's just a fun time, and I think everyone should read it. <laughs> it also talks a lot about class, because she is, like, from a working class family and her parents really struggle for money, that comes into play a lot in the book. It's great. She's also Chinese. Next, we're going to talk about Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. I talked a lot about Ashley Herring Blake in my previous video. This is another great book. It is about this 12 year old girl named Ivy. And in the opening chapters of the book, her family's home is completely decimated by a tornado. So not only is she dealing with like feeling displaced and her family trying to pick up the pieces of their lives, she's also dealing with struggling to tell people that she is gay, basically. Um, she draws pictures of girls together in this sketchbook, which she loses, and someone starts, like, sending her letters about it, and so she's, like, really freaking out about that. So there's also this girl named June that she becomes friends with and starts to get a crush on, and there's just a lot going on, but it's so good. Won the Stonewall Award. Oh, hello, Nedward. Nedwin is joining us. <laughs> Hello. You may recognize him. This book is more focused about Ivy kind of coming to terms with her identity and struggling to come out. Um, it's less so involved in romance, but I still think it's a great book and that everyone should read it. Next book we have is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. I feel like a lot of people know of this book, but don't know that the main character, Francis, is bisexual. It's not like a huge focus of the story. The main focus is on her friendship with Alad, but it does go into like this crush that she had on a girl in the past, and she talks very openly about it. So I really enjoy it. It's also just a really great soft book 
book and I think Francis is a great main character. Next I have a couple of books where the focus really isn't on the character's uh, romantic or sexual identity at all, it's just kind of there, but sometimes that's what you want. You're just like, oh, you're queer? Cool, let's keep going with whatever the fuck we're doing. Um, so first I'm going to talk about Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a YA thriller about a girl named Sadie who is tracking down the man who killed her sister. It's pretty heavy. There's a lot going on, a lot of like trigger warnings for sexual assault and pedophilia. Ned, this is not what we want. Young noodle child getting in the way. Oh my god. Okay, we'll do this, I guess. Sadie is bi or pan somewhere in that umbrella. She expresses interest in multiple genders across the course of the book and is just very chill and normalized. Again, the focus is on tracking down this like disgusting man. So yeah, we love that. <laughs> Next book we're going to talk about is Bunny by Mona Awad. This is a really weird, thank you Ned, uh, can like horror novel. It's about this girl named Samantha who is again attending this prestigious arts college and she's part of this like writing workshop with these four other girls who are kind of this like mean girl click and they all call each other Bunny. It's about her kind of falling in with this group of girls and all the weird shit that they get up to in their spare time. It's awesome. I fucking love it. The main character, Samantha, is also sapphic in some way. It's kind of revealed that she has an interest in another woman at some point. Personally, I think every horror novel should star a sapphic girl, but that's just my opinion. Last novel we're going to talk about is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This is a gothic thriller. I guess you would call it dark academia kind of deal. It's following this girl named Inez who gets accepted into this really prestigious college called Catherine House and everyone who attends this college and graduates goes on to lead these super amazing successful lives. But the school is also known for being very mysterious because everyone who goes into Catherine House has to completely cut off communication with the outside world for the whole three years that they are there. Inez is very casually into people of multiple genders. I, she doesn't give herself a specific label, but we see her, you know, having flings with guys and girls. That's just how she rolls and good for her, you know? Next, we're going to talk about some comics and graphic novels. So first one I'm going to recommend to you is Gotham Central. This series is like a noir crime kind of deal following the Gotham City Police Department as they're trying to do their jobs in this city full of supervillains. <laughs> One of the main characters in the series is Renee Montoya, who I love with all of my heart. She's also a lesbian. She goes through it in this series. Like, she gets outed, she gets a lot of shit <laughs> thrown at her and, you know, it's heavy days, but she is just this great, tenacious, angry character and I love her for that. I feel like if you saw Birds of Prey, you kind of saw like a toned back version of Renee in this series. She is just not having any of it. She will beat you the fuck up and spit in your face afterwards. <laughs> Next, let's talk about Are You Listening by Tilly Walden. This is a weird graphic novel about these two women, Lou and B, who meet each other out on the road and decide to, you know, drive across the country together. And along the way, the landscape begins to change and morph and get weird. It's about dealing with grief and trauma and pretty much how you can't run away from that sort of stuff. Both of the women are gay, but there's not a romance between them. For one thing, there's a bit of an age gap there. It's more so like a kind of mentor-student <laughs> type relationship. Lou is kind of like an older sister-aunt sort of 
figure for B and I really enjoyed their relationship. I really enjoyed this graphic novel in general. Tilly Walden's art is just so good. It can be very warm and then also, you know, you get all these great shit with landscape and colours. I love the character designs and just it's all very good. I think you should read it. I think you might like it. Next, let's talk about Lumberjanes. This is a series that was very popular that I feel like just isn't talked about as much now. And I think it's a shame. Honestly, I've kind of fallen off with it. I need to like get back into it. But it is about this group of girls who are at this all girls like camp uh, for the summer. And they have some various supernatural shenanigans that are going on. There is an FF relationship between two of the girls in here. There is also a trans girl in the main group. And it's just really good. You can tell when a series is kind of written and crafted by queer people because it just hits different. But yeah, this is a really fun series about like friendship and weird shit. I would kind of put it in the same vein as like Gravity Falls and Welcome to Night Vale in that like weird unexplainable stuff is happening and we're trying to figure out what it is. Um, and yeah, it's just a good time. I think you should read it. Last comic I'm going to recommend is Runaways. I'm talking about like the initial run that's written by Brian K. Vaughan. I have not read the most recent run with Rainbow Rowell. I know some stuff happens in that. But this series is about these group of teenagers who all discover that their parents are super villains and they run away and they're trying to stop them. And in the group, there is this girl named Carolina over here who is a lesbian. She's also like this sun alien, like when her powers are activated. That's kind of what she looks like. It's really good. She has this relationship with this gender fluid shape shifting alien named Zarvin. Love them together. This is like just a really fun series that I don't, you don't need a lot of backlog history on the Marvel comics to be able to read this. It's a pretty recent series. You can get them in these big bind ups or you can read it on like Comixology or whatever preferred method <laughs> you have. It also got turned into a TV show, which I haven't seen, but I really want to. And yeah, that is all of the books that I have to tell you about today. I love reading stories about queer women just going through it, just going through life and dealing with shit. Eventually I do want to make a video about like, trans characters. Um, I just need to read more books for that to happen. Um, but yeah, please tell me if you've read any of these books and if so, what are your thoughts? If you have any recommendations for me, throw them my way. I'm always welcoming of new books to pick up. And yeah, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.